A little while ago we were taking a look at possibly the worst graphics card I've ever used, releasing with awful specs and only 8 megabytes of VRAM in the mid 2000s. The question today is though, can we make Half-Life 2 run at 60 FPS with awful specs, 8 megabytes of VRAM and will there be any downsides? Now Half-Life 2 we more or less expect to run on absolutely everything nowadays, and even back in the day it had some really reasonable system requirements meaning any processor slightly better than a Pentium 3 and a graphics card that at least functioned as a display adapter should work. I mean if you look really closely at the box you can make out it'll say it'll even work with a PCI graphics card. The thing is though, when Half-Life 2 actually came out, your average budget graphics card was something like Nvidia's FX5200, a hateful card that can actually run the game somewhat ok in places, or the ATL alternative which was the Radeon 9000, an actually somewhat pretty decent budget card. But the thing is, the amount of VRAM that came on these cards is usually around 64 megabytes, and that's often considered the minimum you'd really want to use. So we really are pushing things with 8 times less VRAM than the cards the game was generally targeting. There's also not really any point going fully over what graphics card we're using, because we saw it a few weeks ago and if you do want to see it in its full glory I'll link the video up the top bit. But the long story short is there was this company called 3D Phantom, they were owned by Pine, who are now XFX, the company you've all heard of, they used to make weird graphics cards using old SIS integrated graphics chips which were usually awful and sometimes cut down and these were more or less a scam. They decided in 2005 they were going to release a cut down version of the SIS 305 which is hardware from 6 years prior in 1999 and this time gave it 8 megabytes of VRAM which is hardly anything. It hardly functions as a display adapter and promises on the box it can gain. I got one new in stock and we tested it and mostly found out that yep, this thing is awful, but it did at the time launch Half-Life 2. It wasn't exactly playable, but it did run. And even here with the original 2004 release, the performance we see stock with just 8 megabytes of VRAM is, well, the only way to describe it, downright awful. The game defaults to DirectX 7 mode, which even then it hardly likes working in, and suffers greatly with stutters, slowdown and a fairly awful frame rate. There's the odd time you might just about see 30 FPS in a small dark room, but that is about as close to good as you're getting. This was in 640x480 with the lowest settings, so it's almost admirable that Half-Life 2 does actually seem to be somewhat controllable. The only thing is that around 5 minutes of gameplay, you're going to be guaranteed the system will crash. There's no way around it, it's just something that Half-Life 2 tends to do when it's given such little VRAM, and we need to figure out how low things can go to become not just stable, but hopefully playable at 60 FPS. Well, with a combination of every single change and edit I could find, I spent the next couple of hours or so messing around with the lowest possible settings we could get in Half-Life 2. I was changing things in the CFG file that I didn't even remember existed, because even though I've tested some proper budget hardware and have tweaked things down low, I was experimenting with vertical resolutions at one point to see if it made a difference to our FPS. And they did, but not enough for us to actually warrant using them because you can't actually use the menus. I even tried an 8-bit colour mode, which understandably even the Source engine calls you out for doing and stops working. But eventually we had it all up and running. We had no reflections, minimal textures, no shadows, the game was forced to load up in a maximum of DirectX 6, there was no anisotropic filtering, no anti-aliasing, there were absolutely no effects left untouched or allowed to load. And to top it all off, I used commands to the shortcut which meant we now had the game loading up in the glorious resolution of just 320 by 240 and the result, well it no longer crashed and I've made a full capture of the first sort of 15 minutes of gameplay with me narrating over the top of it rambling about just how Half-Life 2 looks and plays with just 8 megabytes of VRAM. Okay, so we are here at the start of the Half-Life 2 intro screen uh, what I've done is I've got the game running in 320 by 240 so we've managed to get it running in probably the smallest resolution where it still actually works. Uh, I've turned off virtually every effect, every feature, every single thing that could possibly cause us problems and this is the best experience we've managed to achieve with just 8 megabytes of VRAM. 
and you all wanted to see this, so this has been a painful time getting here. But why don't we go ahead and start a new game? And we're going to see how well this works. Because it's not entirely stable, but it no longer crashes, the text doesn't fit on screen, and it has a few other quirks. So the frame rate generally seems like it's a lot better. It is still liable to drop down quite badly, not as bad as it was before, down to crashing levels, but <laughs> this is it. Um, there we go, the original Black Mesa experiment running at probably about 8 to 10 FPS. I mean, we, we did get an okay average when I tested it, but uh, this, is, this is it. This is the optimal way to play Half-Life 2. On, uh, on a 3D Phantom graphics card, so we're not in for a good time. I had to close Explorer.exe, uh, the game will not run any lower than 16-bit colours, and I mean, this is, this is running alright, this before was completely unplayable, but now, I mean, I can't really make out what's going on too well, but the frame rate doesn't seem the worst, I mean, it's controllable, and it's responsive, and when we look down, we're getting near enough 60 FPS. This is probably going to be one of the few videos I actually upload in 60 FPS, because I am currently recording to try and show you exactly what I'm seeing. So we'll wait to get off the train, and we'll see how things carry on. I mean, the chairs are blue, and are having a disco. The doors don't really look like a door. I don't know what this is down on the floor, I can't quite make that out, but the text is very um, legible. And I mean, we're, we're seeing playable frame rates. Things are spawning in as we approach them, so you can't really tell what's what. Can we pick things? Yeah, we've still got physics effects. We still chuck things about. This looks absolutely hideous. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still working. It's, it's actually running at about 60 FPS here, which I never thought we'd see on a 3D Phantom graphics card. Uh, we're running in DirectX 6 with the lowest everything and then a config file, but I'm sure I've already said this at this point because that's what the point of the video was, getting it working. And if you don't know your way around Half-Life 2, uh, you're in for a bad time because... Uh, I can't really tell where I'm going, and I've played this game. Well, I've played most of it before. So we'll see, and we'll get through here. Oh, look at look at them wall textures. That is, uh, that looks like the dirt texture from Minecraft Alpha, and uh, the lighting effects are really something else. I mean, look at that. That is impressive by standards of 1987. We've also got rooms where things are loaded in there. And that does make up what looks to be a Combine Soldier. I, I just got no other way of showing you this other than to actually just straight up play through it. So, I mean, the intro runs okay. Can we, can we start Root Canal? Because Root Canal tends to be a really, really balanced test of Half-Life 2. So why don't we give that a go? We'll give Root Canal a quick go. You can't really navigate the menus very well because they don't show up properly. So there's no skipping ahead here. Oh, nice. Full 60 FPS in Root Canal so far. This is uh, better than I was expecting. And uh, can we rush down here? Do we actually have weapon? No, we don't really have weapon models. And the wood for this door doesn't really load in. But this is running better than I've ever seen it run before on this graphics card. Oh, the smoke effects are something else. And how's it going to run when we're outside? Now, this bit is quite taxing when you've got no VRAM. And it's still really taxing when you've got no VRAM. Because where it's loading in the train that comes over here, as it loads in, that will uh, get uh, slightly better. We do not want to fall off there, but we are getting better frames for doing so. Which is nice to see. We'll just try and play through this bit. It is a lot more responsive. I mean, the mouse cursor is appearing when it lags slightly off to the left hand side of the screen but um, now the trains on here our frame rate should go up and it did and the main thing is there's no insane input latency anymore this is uh, actually running relatively playably I mean 
the, the explosions work? Do these explosions work? Explosions don't destroy our frame rate as much anymore, which is nice to see. Um, this is now a huge black line, which is not good. So, can we actually do anything here? Yes, we can. It's running really quite reasonably well, given how little VRAM we've got. And it's not crashed. I did restart it before we filmed this bit, just to make sure it was in you know, a fresh install, because usually it would crash by sort of about now, if we were running it standard. Not that this graphics card is a good graphics card by any means, but it is the smallest amount of VRAM I've ever seen on a 2005 graphics card. So, this part here proved to be very taxing and then is suddenly fine again. So, no clue what's happening there. There's a one really funky looking step. This is such an odd way of playing the game. I, Someone probably has completed it like this, but it takes me back to the good old days of changing CFG files to get games running properly, which really isn't something you can do anymore. Back in the day, I mean, you could essentially run modern games on the dirtiest of hardware by turning off effects that you didn't even know existed. And uh, the reason they existed in the first place is because uh, they made the game actually look okay. But so far, this is fine. Anywhere there's a wall or anything like that, we're getting perfect frame rate. I mean, I can hardly see what I'm actually aiming for, but it's responsive enough that it's not actually too much of a problem. Water, um, one of the highlights of the Source engine, looks like a brown uh, pooey soup is probably the only way to uh, describe it, with blue boxes floating around, so it looks like it could be a Channel 5 program out of sewer that's gone wrong. But how's this all going to work? I mean, there's a few lighting effects up here, but so far I'm calling this a big win. We're getting 60 FPS in some places, and I mean, look at that television model. Nice. We should get healed up here. Look at this this, this guy here. Can we get can we get some nice lighting on him? Is he, yeah, the red lighting looks kind of ambient. Nope, there we are. Nope. I mean, we've got no flashlight. Oh, he's actually got an eye. Is that an eye or a head? No, that's his eye. So he, he's doing relatively well. And there are particle effects. Look at that. That's what we wanted to see. So we should be able to get through this door now. Just try this next little bit, but so far... I'm going to say, you can you can probably play through Half-Life like this. I mean, if you actually had any idea what the game was meant to look like and actually knew where you were going, um, it makes it a lot easier. But someone could probably do this, not me. Um, we also get the Node Graph out-of-date rebuilding, which is probably going to crash the system. No, it didn't crash. And look, look at the lighting on that plane. Can we throw a box on it? Look at that. That's some realistic graphics right there. Um, yeah, I'm calling this uh, a big success. I don't know whether I'll be signing off with a little of actual, a bit of actual scripted content, but this is um, remarkably impressive that this has even worked. So it's not great. It looks terrible, but it is running and it's not crashing on an SIS-305 with 8 megabytes of VRAM and you can actually play through the game. I mean, this part here used to really tank the original Xbox port because, uh, I mean, they didn't see that coming. We did, of course, because we can't actually see the grating that's meant to be here. But yeah, I'm calling uh, Half-Life on 8 megabytes of VRAM a monumental success. I mean, this is an art style in itself. This has got creative vision that people just weren't expecting from such little VRAM. But anyway, this is running about the same as it does on the original Xbox, actually. Just the original Xbox actually looked pleasant. Anyway, that's playable. It's getting 60 FPS in some places, 5 FPS in others, but it's averaging probably mid-20s, which I'm calling playable. I'm saying that's a good time. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll probably finish this off with a bit of scripted content. 
So there we have it. This isn't really scripted content, this is me sort of just giving my final thoughts, but it does turn out that Half-Life 2, well, it probably is one of the most scalable games I've ever spent tweaking around with, because just changing the CFG files we were able to take a game that is one of probably the best looking games of 2004 and make it into an absolute monstrosity that is very difficult to play in its current state, but the fact of the matter is, this game will run on what is absolutely terrible hardware by 1999 standards that was then cut down and re-released in 2005. The idea that 8 megabytes of VRAM on a card that doesn't even have proper transform and lighting can actually achieve anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS on average in Half-Life 2 is downright impressive. I mean, it's more of a testament to the game than it is the graphics card, and this was a dumb little project that people asked to see because I mentioned it in that video. So I hope you've all enjoyed watching, thank you very much for spending this time to sit around and watch someone tweak Half-Life 2 down to the most abominable settings I've ever seen, and uh, good night.